The Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 1 Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Most High with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. For forward thoughts separate from the Most High, and his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding, and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. For wisdom is a loving spirit, and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For the Most High is witness of his reins, and a true beholder of his heart, and a hearer of his tongue. For the Spirit of the Most High filleth the world, and that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Therefore he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid, neither shall vengeance, when it punisheth, pass by him. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, and the sound of his word shall come unto the Most High for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. Verse 10 for the ear of jealousy heareth all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. Therefore beware of murmuring which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. Seek not death in the error of your life, and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. For the Most High made not death neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were healthful, and there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to not and made a covenant with it, because they are worthy to take part with it. Chapter 2 For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright, Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke, and a little spark in the moving of our heart which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes, and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. And our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance. And our life shall pass away as a trace of a cloud, and shall be dispersed as a mist, that is driven away with the beams of the sun, and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning. For it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion, and our lot is this. Verse 10 Let us oppress the poor righteous man, let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraideth us with our offending the law, and objecteth to our infamy the transgressions of our education. He professeth to have the knowledge of the Most High, and he calleth himself the child of the Most High. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold. For his life is not like other men's, his ways are of another fashion. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed, and maketh his boast that the Most High is his Father. 
Let us see if his words be true, and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of the Most High, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Verse 20. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness hath blinded them. As for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. For the Most High created man to be immortal, and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Chapter 3 But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. And the sight of the unwise they seem to die, and their departure is taken from misery, and their going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, for the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their power shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Most High. For whoso despiseth wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. Their labors unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. Their wives are foolish, and their children wicked. Their offspring is cursed, wherefore blessed is the barren that is undefiled, which hath not known the sinful bed. She shall have fruit in the visitation of souls. And blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands hath wrought no iniquity, for imagined wicked things against the Most High. For unto him shall be given the special gift of faith, and an inheritance in the temple of the Most High, more acceptable to his mind. For glorious is the fruit of good labors, and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. As for the children of adulterers, they shall not come to their perfection, and the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. For though they live long, yet shall they be nothing regarded, and their last age shall be without honor. Or, if they die quickly, they have no hope, neither comfort in the day of trial, for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. Chapter 4 Better it is to have no children and to have virtue, for the memorial thereof is immortal, because it is known with the Most High and with men. When it is present, men take example at it, and when it is gone, they desire it. It weareth a crown, and triumpheth forever, having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. But the multiplying brood of the ungodly shall not thrive, nor take deep rooting from bastard slips, nor lay any fast foundation. For though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standing not fast, they shall be shaken with the wind, and through the force of winds they shall be rooted out. The imperfect branches shall be broken off, their fruit unprofitable, nor ripe to eat, yea, meat for nothing. For children begotten of unlawful beds are witnesses of wickedness against their parents in their trial. But though the righteous be prevented with death, yet shall he be in rest. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time, nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and an unspotted life is old age. Verse 10. He pleased the Most High, and was beloved of him, so that living among sinners he was translated. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding, or deceit beguile his soul. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of 
concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. He being made perfect in a short time fulfilled a long time. For his soul pleased the Most High, therefore hasted he to take him away from among the wicked. This the people saw and understood it not, neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with his saints, and that he hath respect unto his chosen. Thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living, and youth that is soon perfected the many years and old age of the unrighteous. For they shall see the end of the wise, and shall not understand what the Most High in his counsel hath decreed of him, and to what end the Most High hath set him in safety. They shall see him and despise him, but the Most High shall laugh them to scorn, and they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead for evermore. For he shall rend them and cast them down headlong, that they shall be speechless, and he shall shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly laid waste and be in sorrow, and their memorial shall perish. And when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear, and their own iniquities shall convince them to their face. Chapter 5 Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. And they, repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, shall say within themselves, This was he, whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the Most High, and his lot is among the saints? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction, yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Most High, we have not known it. What hath pride profited us, or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow, and as a post that hasted by. Verse 10 And as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the kill in the waves. Or as when a bird hath flown through the air, there is no token of her way to be found. But the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings, and parted with the violent noise and motion of them, is passed through. And there and afterwards, no sign where she went is to be found. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it parteth the air, which immediately cometh together again, so that a man cannot know where it went through. Even so we, in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end, and had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. For the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest, and passeth away as the, re as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. But the righteous live for evermore, their reward also is with the Most High, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Most High's hand, for with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor, and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. He shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of an helmet, he shall take holiness for an invincible shield. His severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword, and the word shall fight with him against the unwise. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad. And from the clouds, as from a well-drawn bow, shall they fly to the mark. And hailstones full of wrath shall be cast as out of a stone bow, and the water of the sea shall rage against them, and the flood shall cruelly drown them. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, and like a storm shall blow them away. 
Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. Chapter 6 Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. Learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Most High, and sovereignty from the Highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of the Almighty. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he which is power over all shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he hath made the small and great, and careth for all alike. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. Unto you therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. Verse 10 For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore set your affliction upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away, yea, she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her in making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. Therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into light, and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and a wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive therefore instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. Chapter 7 I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made, of the earth and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep and when I was born I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth which is of like nature and the first voice which I uttered was crying as all others do I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth for all men have one interest into life, and the light going out. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon the Most High, and the Spirit of Wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver should be counted as clay before her. Verse 10 I loved her above all health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. All good things together came to me with her, and innumerable riches in her hands. And I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom goeth before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them. I learned diligently, and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches, for she is a treasure unto men that never faileth which they that use become the friends of the Most High, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. 
The Most High hath granted me to speak as I would, and to conceive as is meet for the things that are given to me, because it is he that leadeth unto wisdom, and directeth the wise. For in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also, and knowledge of workmanship. For he hath given me certain knowledge of things that are, namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements, the beginning, ending, and midst of the times, the alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons, the circuits of years and the positions of stars. Verse 20. The natures of living creatures and the furies of wild beasts, the violence of winds and the reasonings of men, the diversities of plants and the virtues of roots, and all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, holy, one holy, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good, kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care, having all power, overseeing all things, and going through all understanding, pure and most subtle spirits. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of the Most High, and the image of His goodness. And being but one, she can do all things, and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new, and in all ages entering into holy souls. She maketh them friends of the Most High, and prophets. For the Most High loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. For she is more beautiful than the sun, and above all the order of stars. Being compared with the light, she is found before it. For after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Chapter 8 Wisdom reacheth from one end to another mightily, and sweetly doth she order all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. I desired to make her my spouse, and I was a lover of her beauty. In that she is conversant with the Most High, she magnifieth her nobility. Yea, the power of all things himself loved her. For she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of the Almighty and a lover of his works. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? And if prudence work, who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues. For she teacheth temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude, which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. If a man desire much experience, she knoweth things of old, and conjectureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtilities of speeches, and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders in the events of seasons and times. Therefore I purpose to take her to me to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things and a comfort in cares and grief. Verse 10 For her sake I shall have estimation among the multitude and honor with the elders, though I be young. I shall be found of a quick conceit in judgment, and shall be admired in the sight of great men. When I hold my tongue, they shall bide my leisure, and when I speak, they shall give, they shall give good ear unto me. If I talk much, they shall lay their hands upon their mouth. Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality, and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. I shall set the people in order, and the nation shall, shall be subject unto me. Horrible tyrants shall be afraid when they do but hear of me. I shall be found good among the multitude and valiant in war. After I am come into mine house, I will repose myself with her, for her conversation hath no bitterness, and to live with her hath no sorrow, but myrrh and joy. Now when I considered these things in myself, and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality, and great pleasure it is to have her friendship, 
and in the works of her hands are infinite riches, and in the exercise of conference with her prudence, and in talking with her a good report, I went about seeking how to take her to me, for I was a witty child and had a good spirit, yea, rather being good, I came into a body undefiled. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her except the Most High gave her me, and that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was, I prayed unto the Most High and besought him, and with my whole heart I said, Chapter 9 O power of my fathers and master of mercy, who has made all things with thy word, and ordained man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which you have made, and order the world according to equity and righteousness, and execute judgment with an upright heart. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, and reject me not from among thy children. For I thy servant and son of thine handmaid am a feeble person, and of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. You have chosen me to be a king of thy people and a judge of your sons and daughters. You have commanded me to build a temple upon your holy mount and an altar in the city wherein you dwellest, a resemblance of the holy tabernacle which you have prepared from the beginning. And wisdom was with you, which knoweth your works and was present when you madest the world and knew what was acceptable in your sight and right in your commandments. Verse 10. O oh, send her out of your holy heavens and from the throne of your glory, that being present she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto you. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge the people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High? Or who can think what the will of the Most High is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth, and with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven who hath searched out? And thy counsel who hath known, except you give wisdom, and send the Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto you, and were saved through wisdom.